Hey, very warm welcome today. Welcome to Reflections, our devotional Bible study. We have this every week. Uh, we're presently in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. We just finished the Beatitudes. We looked at eight of those. Now we're in chapter 6. Jesus will be looking at the anxious heart. Uh, chapter 6, verse 25, if you have a Bible and would like to follow along. We're going to begin with that uh, uplifting him, the everlasting arms today. <laughs> what a fellowship, what a joy to find, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. On the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning, leaning, leaning On the everlasting arms Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way Leaning on the everlasting arms Oh, how bright the path rose from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the lasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. A lot of truth packed in that short little verse. I like how that last verse ends. As we lean on those everlasting arms, we have blessed peace with our Lord so near, safe and secure from all alarms. That kind of ties in to uh, what Jesus has for us today in Matthew chapter 6 about worry. And then we pick it up from verse uh, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fi uh, fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Came across a church sign that said, Don't let worry kill you. Let the church help. There was a man who agreed to be a hired worrier for a salary of 200000 per year. So his first question to his boss after accepting, well, where are you going to get 200000 per year to pay my salary? The boss responded, that's your worry. You know, it's interesting. I came across the top 10 worries of the late 20th century roughly the 1990s. Do you remember the 1990s? 
I was early in ministry. I got ordained in 1985, so uh, I was just starting a pastoral ministry in those days. Well, the top worries then were AIDS and nuclear waste, global warming and famine, the federal deficit, pollution, and more, and a lot of that's still lingering around, isn't it? Well, what might be the some of the top worries in our world today? Certainly, it's still the uh, uh, n- nuclear threat. Uh, there's drought in the far west. There's uh, ongoing wars that never seem to end. And right now, certainly, there's the economic challenge of all prices just seem to be skyrocketing out of control. And uh, we're still in a pandemic that uh, you wonder if that's ever uh, going to end, at least get better. Yet um, everybody has their own worries on their mind. Uh, Dr. Charles Mayo said, worry affects the circulation, heart, glands, and the whole nervous system. I've never met or known anyone to die of overwork, but I've known a lot who died of worry. I guess you could say our culture is probably the most anxious culture in the world. The land of stars and stripes has become the country of stress and strife. In fact, stress-related ailments cost $300 billion every year in medical bills and lost productivity. William Misner, a playwright born in the late 1800s, said, Life is a tough proposition, and the first hundred years are the hardest. Well, small worries make us bite our nails, but the big ones cause ulcers, destroy faith. As Christians, we're not immune to worry because we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. I just want to share a few observations on what Jesus just said in the passage that was read. Interesting, the word worry is used six times. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. The word here means to have concern. It can be healthy. Paul uses this same word about his, the concern he had for the churches he planted. So anxiety can have good expressions, but it can also become sinful. In fact, the word comes from an old English word, which means to strangle, choke, or seize by the throat. The Greek definition refers to being drawn in different directions so as to be distracted. It refers to wolves killing sheep, by biting them around the neck, strangling their prey to death. So I, I, I know you say, well, hey, Chaplain Chris, what's the difference between concern and worry? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question. And I will tell you uh, next week. Is that all right? Oh, that's too long. You'd probably worry about what the difference is. All right. What's the difference between concern and worry? Concern acknowledges that something needs careful thought. Worry is giving to something consuming trepidation, alarming fear something will happen. Concern gives way to planning. Worry gives way to fear. Concern leads to healthy attention. Worry leads to unhealthy anxiety. Concern moves you to action. Worry immobilize you. You know, planning for tomorrow is time well spent. Worry, worrying about tomorrow is time that is wasted. So worry will pull us apart and can lead, and can lead to mental and emotional strangulation. A man said to a psychiatrist, you know, sometimes I think I'm a teepee and sometimes I think I'm a wigwam. The psychiatrist just said, your problem is you're too tense. Well, don't think about that one too hard. Well, Jesus addresses the anxious heart, those who are strangled by unhealthy anxiety and worry. 
And so Jesus reminds us three times not to worry. These are commands from Jesus, not suggestion. What happens if we break down several types of anxiety? The first type of anxiety is a, a God-given emotional response for our benefit. So it, say you run into a 600-pound grizzly bear in the Yukon. You're probably going to feel a little anxious. That's the way God designed us. It's a good thing. Uh, we might feel a little anxious if we misplaced our keys or our phone or something of that nature. And that's a, kind of a healthy thing because it's a, just an emotional response for a, a, our benefit. The second type is a disordered psychological response. It's often the result of trauma, a, a chronic condition, and can affect a wide range of, of individuals like soldiers, uh, first responders, victims of abuse. Another type is the natural consequences uh, of sin. Say someone with a serious gambling problem is going deeply in debt. They're going to feel anxious when all the financial obligations come calling. There are more people addicted to anxiety than to all the other addictions combined. And then there's a, a sinful response to God's providential care. Reminds me of a man who uh, worked on a barge in the Mississippi uh, he was carrying something and fell overboard. He cried for help, went under the water and came back up crying for help. If somebody doesn't help me, I'm going to have to drop one of these anvils, he cried out. It's not always easy to let go and to trust God. You know, worry is the sin of distrusting the promise and providence of God. It's a sin that Christians commit perhaps more frequently than any other sin. And so this is the type of anxiety Jesus is referring to in the Sermon on the Mount. It's the kind of worry that chokes off our faith and trust in God. It strangles our trust in God. It chokes off our ability to trust those everlasting arms. That's where the peace comes from, is learning to trust in those everlasting arms arms. So unhealthy worry strangles because it depreciates our worth. And Jesus said, well, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns. Your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Yes, we are. See, in Jesus' day, water was scarce. Food was often a problem. The average worker was paid daily. Jesus would teach us to pray for our daily bread. Most people in those days knew nothing of bread for a week or a month, unless you were in the upper echelon, so to speak. Birds are plentiful in the region, and the Lord decides to make some of them uh, an illustration. So he says, uh, take a good look at the birds, which it was a radical teaching because God places a, a higher value on human beings than he does animals or his creation. Interesting, in India, the cow has more valuable, is more val has more value than the life of starving children. See, in those days, the culture did not value human life. Charlie Brown once said to Linus, I worry about school a lot. I worry about worrying so much about school, Linus. Linus, even my anxieties have anxieties. Poor Charlie Brown is not feeling worth very much, is he? You've heard of James Cash Penny, who started J.C. Penny. He made some unwise commitments and came very depressed. In fact, he worried so much, he developed shingles. Well, the doctor admits him to the hospital. He received a sedative that quickly wore off, and he woke believing he was going to die that very night. Well, he wakes up the next morning 
surprised he was still alive. And he heard some singing in the chapel, a song called God Will Take Care of You. He walks in. He listens to the singing and the message with a very heavy heart. And then something happened. He said, I realized I alone was responsible for my troubles. I knew Jesus was there to help me. And from that day forward, there a peace that passes all human understanding touched his heart and his mind. And he realized God would take care of him. Those everlasting arms were there to lift him up and pick him up and guide and direct him every step of the way. And so we see life is greater than the physical food and clothing. And if God is able to give us life, the greater challenge, don't you think it can take care of sustaining life, which is a lesser challenge? So worry steals our sense of worth. Worry depreciates our God-created value. So not only does it uh, depreciate our worth, but then it denies faith. And so Jesus goes on to say, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Well, of course we can't. I mean, Jesus, God is the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, and everything in between. We have no control over our birth or when God will call us home. But the truth is, we can literally worry ourselves to death, but we can't worry ourselves to a longer life. A professor at a leading American university studied things people worry about, and he discovered 40% of things will never happen. 30% is about the past that can't be changed. 12% is unfounded criticism, mostly untrue. 10% is about health, which gets worse with stress. 8% are legitimate concerns. So when you add all that up, 92% is wasted energy that's mental and emotional outside our control. An exasperated husband said to his wife, why are you always worrying when it doesn't do any good? She piped back, oh, yes, it does. 90% of the things I worry about never happen. No worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but never takes you anywhere. That's why Jesus said, if God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you, of little faith. Now in Jesus' day, the iris, lily, the gladiola, and scarlet poppy flourished on the landscape where Jesus taught. They bloomed in glorious color so briefly it humiliated the best clothing King Solomon wore. That's why Jesus said, pagans run after all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Are you going to live like unbelievers or children who are going to inherit the riches of heaven? A lady once asked her pastor, do you think God is interested in my little problems? The pastor said, ma'am, do you think any of your problems are actually big to God? <laughs> you know, when we worry, we're assuming responsibility for things God never intended us to have. There was a, uh, a missionary, a uh, very influenced Christian evangelist in the uh, late 1800s into the early uh, mid-1900s, Dr. Stanley Jones. I love what he says. He says, I'm inwardly fashioned for faith, not fear. Fears not, are not my native land. Faith is. In anxiety and worry, my being is gasping for breath. These are not my native air. But in faith and confidence, I breathe freely. These are my native air. Isn't that great? Uh, fear 
is not our native land. Faith is. Anxiety and worry is like gasping for breath, and that's not our native air. But as we breathe freely, freely, faith, trust, and confidence in God's word, that truly is our native air. So worry strikes a blow at God's love for us and the truth and words of his promises working in our life. Question, are you gasping right now or are you breathing freely? Well, as we hear God's word go in, he wants us to breathe in his peace. He wants to breathe in the truth of his word. He wants to breathe in his life, hope, health, and salvation. And he wants us to breathe out all those worries and things that would weigh us down. You know, our anxiety level is a good indicator of how much we truly trust in the Lord. So how do we uh, win over worry? How can we whip worry according to what Jesus said? Well, Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So we're to live every day with the sacred priority. Seek refers to the intensity of the hunt for game. You know, I remember in my days of fishing, I'm very intense looking at that line, see if there's a nibble or a bite or people who hunt turkeys or, or ducks or whatever. They're very intense. It involves the entirety of the hunter. First means it's dominant. We're to pursue God more than anything or anyone. Jesus, you're my everything because you went to the cross and shed your blood. You rose for me. You've conquered sin, death, worry, and hell for me. I know who we are and whose we are because of what Jesus did for you and me. So we have a sacred priority. Jesus, you're my everything. I pursue you passionately today once again. And then we live within a simple boundary. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So it's developing the art of living one day at a time. See, if we bring yesterday's troubles into today's grace, will exceed the weight limit. Let me say it again. If we bring yesterday's troubles into today's grace, will exceed the weight limit. The only place perpetual worry will get us ahead of time is the cemetery. And so we have to draw a boundary around the limits of our concerns. If it's yesterday or related tomorrow, it's outside the boundary. See, worry does not empty yesterday of its sorrows. It empties today of its strength, its grace, and peace. So the key to whipping worry is living within a simple boundary, as Jesus said. We're just going to take it moment by moment. As the scripture says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And we just uh, keep our eyes on Jesus, living right now in the moment, not letting yesterday or tomorrow weigh us down, but keeping our eyes on Jesus. A bassoon player came up to his conductor, Arturo Toscanani. He's a famous Italian conductor, very influential in the early 20th century. He was known for his intensity and his ears for detail. So the bassoon player comes up and says nervously, I'm not going to be able to reach the high E flat. And with a smile, he said, don't worry. There is no E flat in your music tonight. Blessed are those too busy to worry in the daytime and too sleepy to worry at night. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives us some insight and wisdom when the anxious moments of life would want to weigh us down. We have a Savior who lifts us up, who picks us up, who fills us up with his peace, 
He says, I have everything under control. My peace I give to you. Give those worries to me. Give those cares to me. So we close with that great hymn, Because He Lives. And just remember, the chorus really applies well to God's word today. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He Life is worth the living just because he lives. So when those anxious moments of worry want to get the best of you, just make a fist, just clench your fist, and think of this little chorus, the everlasting arms, or because he lives, or your favorite scripture. And Jesus says, do not worry. And as those worries want to get the best of us. Just think of that scripture or this chorus. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. All fear, all worry is gone. Just release those fists. Give that worry to Jesus. He holds today, yesterday, tomorrow, the future. Life is worth the living because he lives. So may that grace and that peace, that hope, of the Savior, fill you up so we may overcome and whip those worries of life. That's God's promise to us today. May that be true for you till we meet again.